Death cover with another one. Death cover with another one. Chef cover with another one. Chef cover. Welcome to another episode of Kelvin's Kitchen, where today it's all about meat and potatoes. Not just any meat. We're doing a prime porterhouse steak. Uh, my friends at AB Steaks sent me an amazing care package. Let's see what I can do with a porterhouse steak and take potatoes to the next level with potato gratin. Let's get cooking. I'm going to take a sauce pot and we're going to add about one cup of heavy cream. There you go. Cup of heavy cream into our stock pot. I'm gonna add fresh ground pepper. I'm gonna say about a teaspoon. Uh, we're gonna take kosher salt, about a teaspoon, usually two pinches. Uh, next, we're gonna add some aromatics. We're gonna start off with garlic. I'm gonna grab two cloves of garlic, smash them with your hand, like Hulk smash, or with a knife as easier as you can see. Next, time to add some herbs. Adding thyme and rosemary for our aromatics. We're gonna bring this to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, we're gonna turn it off. All right, so this is a Japanese mandolin. It's one of my favorite, but very dangerous uh, machines. So please be careful. As you can see, I'm adjusting the thickness. I have a clean Idaho potato. Uh, I just wanna make sure that it's the proper thickness. That's exactly what we're looking for. Uh, be careful with the slippery potato. <laughs> Again, you have to be very careful using this. Take your time. Don't go as fast as I'm going, but look at the thickness. I want to make sure that the same size because it's very important when we're cooking this potato gratin that it's going to cook evenly. So we're going to slice it down until we get all of them. And then once you get to the little butts of it, I'm not even going to waste my time. I'm just going to throw away the little piece of potato because my fingers and my hands are more important. So next I'm grabbing two containers. These are the containers that I'm using because it's oven proof. And I'm going to just shingle along our potatoes. Every time I have one layer of potatoes, I like to season with salt and pepper. Uh, remember, the keys to success is seasoning in layers. Um, so every time I do this, we're going to make sure that we're going to fill it up all the way to the top. So let's make that happen now. Once we get to the top, we're going to make sure that we season one more time with salt and pepper. And then we're going to have our heated cream strained and poured right over the top so right now our oven is preheated at 400 degrees i'm hitting the top of both of these bad boys with some parmigiano reggiano literally you can put as much as you want i'm just making sure that it's completely covered one more batch of salt and pepper and in the oven we go for 30 minutes next we're going to do our shallots i got three shallots fairly decent similar size shallots are in the onion family um, I'm using these skin on because we're going to roast them whole. We're adding kosher salt, extra virgin olive oil, fresh ground pepper, coriander. You know, I like my spices. Um, so we're adding coriander to this, about a teaspoon of coriander, a little bit of red chili flakes. It's a half a teaspoon of chili flakes. It's not going to be spicy. Don't worry. And then we're going to add one of my ingredients that I always have in my kitchen. And if you've done any of my recipes, you know about truffle honey. We're adding two tablespoons of truffle honey to this beautiful, beautiful, already exciting marinade. So once we added the second tablespoon of honey, we're gonna mix this all up. We're gonna transfer this into uh, our cooking vessel. I like to use this beautiful uh, little mac and cheese container that I used to use for my events because it works well in the oven, uh, but you can use a saute pan, anything that's oven proof. Um, we gotta make sure we put all this good stuff all over the shallots, because remember, we work so hard to make this little marinade, if that's what you wanna call it. It's flavor, it's love. Uh, I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil above each one. Um, 
And then the most important thing is we just got to cover it. So I'm going to use a little bit of aluminum foil to completely cover. Uh, it's going to go right into that 400 degree oven where the potato gratin is already in. And this is going to take about 25 minutes. Now it's time for the main event, the porterhouse steak, the moment you've all been waiting for. All right, so there's two parts of a porterhouse. This right here is the filet. Then you got the beautiful New York strip. And then you got the bone that's right in the center. Uh, mine came in a vacuum seal. Uh, so there's always a little bit of residual liquid. Make sure you pat your steak dry. Uh, this is my second time patting it, so of course it wasn't that perfect. But make sure you pat your steak or any steak that you use um, dry for a while. Uh, most important thing, I also bring my steak to room temperature. It's important to do that if you want a perfect medium steak. If you go and take it out the refrigerator and season it and do a really nice hard sear, which we're about to do, you're going to get a lot of unevenness. So we're going to season both sides with fresh ground pepper uh, and kosher salt. Uh, do not be afraid of seasoning your steak. I'm not asking you to do a salt crust. Just asking you to season your steak the way you see me seasoning my steak. Generously, because this is your first layer of flavor. Pat in your seasoning to the steak, and let's get ready to sear. So we got a nice cast iron skillet. If you don't have a cast iron, uh, you can use a non-stick pan or anything that you cook your steaks in. Um, my heat is very high. I have it on, I'm going to say high heat. Um, our oven is at 400, so I'm just checking in and seeing how everything's going on over there. This literally took me five minutes to sear on the first side. Um, there's going to be smoke in the house, so be careful. Uh, make sure your windows are open, your door is open, and let that beautiful aroma go into the hallways or outside of your house and make everyone smell all the deliciousness that's going on in your house. But um, I got a nice little ventilator above my uh, stove, so it's helping me out a little bit. So this process, I'm fast forwarding it, but it's really taking me five minutes before I turn the steak. I added some garlic, some rosemary, some thyme, uh, because what we're doing is is flavoring the oil. This oil is going right into the steak, and we want to make sure that we're not touching the steak. You see, I'm not playing around with it. I'm not poking at it. Um, I'm giving it its time to do its love. Uh, so after the five-minute mark is where you're going to check and see how your steak is looking. Um, if you want to check before that, check at the three-minute mark. All right, we're finally time to turn our steak. We're at the five-minute mark. Look at this beauty. If yours doesn't look like this, keep it face down until it does. There's a couple spots that aren't perfectly charred the way I want it to, but I'm going to show you how we're going to accomplish that by basting. Basting is something that I love to do with steak. Um, so right now we're turning it over, giving it its love. I'm doing another five minutes on this side because um, we, for me, I'm looking for a medium steak. So I'm going to do five minutes on both sides and then three to four minutes in the oven and then another three minutes to let the steak rest. We all know that leaving the steak and not touching it is important after it's cooked so all the juices stay inside. After three minutes, I'm gonna throw the entire pan in the oven for three minutes. All right, so now the steak is out the oven. I'm adding three tablespoons of butter and we are doing a beautiful butter jacuzzi for this steak. It's actually basting, this is basting 101. Uh, so remember I told you I couldn't get those little pieces on the filet extra charred. I'm gonna do that now uh, by making sure that the hot oil, the hotness of the cast iron skillet that was in the oven and on the stove top, we're just making sure that we pour this beautiful hot liquid all over the steak so it's completely covered and beautiful. All right, now we're making sure that we hit every side of the steak in this hot pan with this beautiful butter and herbs and garlic and just full of love. Uh, once we're done with this step, this is the last step, we're letting our steak rest. Don't touch it for three minutes. Let's check our potato gratin next. Let's check our shallots. We should be good to go. All right, so now our steak is resting. Our potato gratin is perfect. I'm taking our shallots out. Our shallots look great. Made a nice little liquid on the bottom. I'm just basically taking a toothpick, making sure it's tender. Before serving, we're gonna take out this outer shell, which is our, it's its casing that it naturally comes in. And then we're gonna pour this beautiful olive oil honey mixture right over our shallots once we plate it. All right, this porterhouse looks incredible. So like I told you, we have two sides. I'm gonna cut off the left side first by holding onto the bone. That's the filet, you go straight down and then to the left, you remove the filet. And then I'm gonna reverse this so it's easier for me to cut off. 
uh, since I am a, a right-hander, I grab my meat with the left, then I grab the knife with the right, straight down to the left again, and now we separated the New York strip, look at that bone, and the filet. So now it's time uh, to slice. So what I'm going to do is slice the New York strip against the grain. Look how beautifully perfect medium that is. Of course, if you want it cooked a little bit more, you would leave this in the oven a little bit longer. Um, but wow, that looks incredible. No juices are flying all over the cutting board. They're staying inside the steak because we did the most important thing. We let the steak rest. Always let your meat rest, whether it's steak, chicken, pork, duck. Always let it rest. Um, wow, this is incredible. The filet is tender. I could have used a butter knife for this one. All right, let's move our cutting board out the way. I always have a wet napkin underneath so it's easy and my cutting board isn't sliding everywhere. There's my shallots with the beautiful sauce drizzled. I put some asparagus because we need a little bit of greenery in our plate. The potato gratin is perfect. And let's just reassemble this porterhouse. Let's make this porterhouse as beautiful as we can. Um, you can make a nicer maturi sauce with this. I'll show you that on the next video. We could do our classic steak sauce by using some red wine. You can do a hollandaise, a bernays. Uh, there's so many endless opportunities with sauces, but honestly, with the shallots, the potato gratin, as tender as this beautiful porterhouse from AB Steaks is, I'm not going to mess that up. I'm not going to mess that up. I'm just going to eat that the way it is. I'm putting the filet right back. Oh, man, I can't wait to dig in. This is actually making my mouth water. And like I do with all of my great meats, I'm adding a little bit of Malden sea salt. And that is just going to add a little bit burst of flavor. Oh, man. <laughs> Look. Woo. The steak smells incredible. We did such an amazing job. The potato gratin, it's... <sighs> My mouth is salivating. I put some asparagus. We need a little bit of greenery on the plate. I'm going to go for the filet because that's my favorite part. Uh, I don't even need a steak knife. It's so tender. Oh my God. Mm. Salt and pepper goes a long way. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I can't tell you how amazing this is until you do it yourself. The steak is incredibly tender. You got two different textures with the filet and the New York strip. You have the caramelized honey roasted truffle honey shallot that we did. Mm. Get some oniony flavor. It's a little bit of sweet. We drizzled the truffle honey on top. This is a home run. All right, we got to go for a little bit of this New York strip right here. Look how tender. Oh my God. It's cooked perfectly. For my liking. Two bites and it's gone. Wow. I'm so happy. Of course, if you want the steak cooked a little bit more, you can. But why do it to something that's so delicious? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Kelvin's Kitchen. Happy cooking. Happy eating. I'll see you next time. Chef Kelvin with another one.